Hi everyone, um, welcome to the latest episode of The Dialogue. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, um, my name is Talitha, I'm the Associate Director at Harnham, um, and if you don't know, we are the global leaders in data and analytics recruitment. Uh, today, I'm joined by Alistair Dickinson, um, he's the CEO of Maximize, um, and he's here to talk to us a bit about location intelligence, CRM, and the importance of data visualisation. Um, we are live, and we'd love to hear from you, so please pop your comments and questions below, and we'll try and answer as many as possible um, throughout the session. So, um, Alistair, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi Talitha, thank you for inviting me on, obviously, um, and it's absolutely great. Um, I've, uh, yeah, I'm Alistair, uh, and I, I own a technology company called uh, MyCRM and Maximize, um, and we look at, you know, data and business systems and all of those kind of good things. Um, I've got a software engineering background uh, and spent, I've spent probably 22 years now in the technology industry. Lovely. Do you want to tell us a bit more about um, Maximize and, and what you guys do there? Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, it's quite a, a long story, so I'll, I'll try and keep it short because, um, <laughs> you know, I can ramble on forever. But about about uh, 11 years ago, I decided I wanted to set up a software company because I'd done a lot of projects around London, around the country. And I thought it's probably time to set something up and, and you know, actually follow that dream. Um, so for the last 11 years, we've been building business applications and selling them worldwide. And Maximize is one of those. It's our latest sort of business offering, really, that's a, a, a SaaS platform. And we started it or we started the build in 2017. Um, it's taken, you know, we well, it's taken two years to do the build. We launched early last year. Um, and then we did a, a hard launch in um, January and everything was going really, really well till about the middle of March. Something happened in the middle of March um, and I just, you know, it obviously everything went quiet. But the idea of the platform is just to allow business users to gain some location intelligence very quickly from their business data, from the CRM data or, and we all use spreadsheets still. Um, so you can upload your different spreadsheets and you can overlay all of that different information. To, uh, to to really get some analysis about region, location, by country, by postcode, all of those kind of good things, really. Yeah, I can imagine, uh, yeah, in March probably hit a, hit a few of us um, over the last few months. It's been a, been a crazy year. Um, so I guess for people that are joining us that maybe aren't as familiar, do you want to give a bit more detail around, you know, location-based marketing and, and yeah. you know, the, the ins and outs of it? Yeah, absolutely. It's not really just location-based marketing, although that plays a, a major role. I mean, marketing has changed so much in the last, just in the last five years. You know, if, if you think where LinkedIn's come from and you think all of the different ways that we're marketing now. And the idea of, of kind of location marketing is the, is the ability to understand customer data or understand customer data by region, um, but then overlay other data. So, you know, an example I always give is, you know, you overlay the kind of tube lines of London um, and then you can filter your customers by those tube lines. And if those tube lines were on strike or there was a breakdown or there was a, a major incident, you could then contact the customers that may be affected by those tube lines. Yeah. But instead of just sending out to a, a big list, you know, and we've all done email marketing. I mean, it, you know, email marketing 10 years ago was like the thing, you know, that's how we that's how we did business. Uh, but now, you know, it's a little bit more tailored. You can, you know, you can draw down a road and you can select the uh, the, the sort of customers you want to contact or the people you want to contact. Um, and it just gives that insight to, um, especially if you're sending out sort of uh, paper-based uh, type marketing, it allows you to just understand your data a little bit better. Yeah, and I think, I mean, my, I've, I've worked in the analytics um, space recruiting for nearly nearly eight years, actually, this year, and I, I agree with you, I think it's so different now with what companies are doing and how they're trying to understand, you know, their customers. And clearly, that example you gave is great because that's just so valuable to be able to help people day to day and be yeah. able to identify, to identify those issues. Um, just as a reminder, please keep your questions coming through um, and, and obviously Alistair will be happy to answer any questions you might specifically have um, around around the product. Um, I know a big part of um, Maximize is around you know, data visualisation and being able to demonstrate to different businesses you know, what's going on. 
a lot of the time we're working with candidates that are kind of interested in understanding data visualization and 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 you know how valuable is that to them from your side and obviously you've got extensive experience working across the data landscape do you see that as being i mean how important do you see data visualization as being for, for a data professional in this space at the moment it's, it's hugely important um i think you know the way analytics has evolved over the last sort of few years how businesses are now making a lot more use of data um mm -hmm. you know I, i've been around this this you know industry for sort of you know tw as i say 20 odd years um and originally it was all about just having a database and we'd all fill in our databases and nothing was done with the data and then sort of analytics came along and we're, every business now we talk to um wants to get a better understanding of and, and visualize that data um mm -hmm. in, a, in an easy way um, there's some, there's loads of great tools out there, and I'm, I'm not going to pretend or, or so say ours is the only solution out there. It's not, um, but we make it easy. Um, and the idea is, is that you can overlay lots of different data, and there's, there's loads and loads of free data on the web as well. Um, you know, you can get sort of weather data, you can get crime data, you can get uh, data about housing, and it just allows you to kind of build up a real picture and having that kind of visualization element it allows you just to make very quick decisions and if you're now a sort of uh, a candidate going into that sort of uh, business space uh, or, or analyzing data it adds that extra sort of level of of understanding because you're not just running through spreadsheets um, and trying to analyze data it, you can take that data and you can get a, a, an understanding very quickly of, of what it looks like by location yeah, and I think also, you know, for, you know, for non technical audiences as well, it's, it's so beneficial to be able to use it. And I imagine with, with something like with what you're providing, it makes it much more accessible for those people that and maybe that, are, that like myself, not a, not a data, not, yeah. not great with numbers, um, but it makes it a lot easier to understand. And, and that's exactly it, really. I mean, we've Mapsmize, you know, it came from an original product that we built that was sat inside a CRM system. Um, and we were quite limited to what we could do with inside the CRM system because you know it's a framework um and we we kind of thought well when we when we rebuilt you know the mapping tool we thought well if we take it outside we can do a lot more with it with a lot more data but we had to make it easy to use because we want sales people and marketing people and you know uh operations people to be able to just pull up a map look at the data and go oh that's where that is you know or that's what this means uh, yeah. instead of having to be a sort of a data scientist to understand you know you know, let the data scientists do real data scientists work yeah. uh, and let everybody else understand, you know, where their data is by location. Yeah. And are you seeing, um, we kind of touched on it, I guess, earlier in the conversation, but are you seeing um, from companies more and more now that people are much more interested in, in the, you know, location insights and, and helping that to inform their business strategy? absolutely um you know we've you know as we only launched in sort of uh january or hard launch in january of this year and all of the customers we've worked with apart from the the, the lockdown period that we'll not talk about um mm -hmm. the, the, we've seen some amazing examples of people wanting to connect up different business systems now we've got connectors for um microsoft dynamics salesforce sugar crm dot digital and for uh, MailChimp as well to enable kind of marketing to enable understanding that data. But each of those individual companies have come to us and you know sort of said, you know, oh, can I visualize my you know, temporary staff? Can I visualize my uh, teachers that I want to yeah. use for homeschooling? Um, and yeah, it's it's pretty endless as long as you can identify a location for that piece of data you can visualize it all. Yeah, it's interesting because because you they, those sort of examples that you just gave actually would have been really nowhere near as prevalent as as they are now like a few months ago and so actually yeah. I know it's been a, it's been an unusual time but there's some benefit you know benefits and interesting things I guess that have come out of it off the back of it. Yeah. And one one of the examples I was giving to a, a client the other day they were they were talking about local lockdowns and this is just in the UK. And so I kind of brought up the UK as a map and I showed them all of their data and it was, they had a lot of customer data. Um, and I, they sort of said, well, you know, what about Leicester or what about Bolton? I, I was just highlighting postcodes and then highlighting the bits on the map and saying, well, those are all your customers in that region. Yeah, so you can, if you're planning sales trips 
or you're planning on site, then you know you can avoid that and you can do yeah. that via Zoom or any other conference call if you can do that. Yeah. Uh, so they were they they did get quite excited about it. But people do you know you do get excited about visual data and you add a few charts and some analytics um, and it starts to look really, really quite interesting. Yeah, well, it's, it's interactive as well. And, and I keep talking about someone like me, but you can actually get more out of it. Like you can, it's much easier to tell a story with it, isn't it, to someone that's, you know, not as used to working with data. Yeah. Um, we've got a question from Segar. Um, I hope okay. I pronounced it correctly. Um, sorry if I haven't. Um, so he's asked, what, which data sources can you access via the platform? Okay. So we're, we've currently got six um, we've built connectors, uh, direct sort of direct connectors for Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, and Sugar CRM, mm -hmm. um, and these are using the credentials for each of those platforms. So you don't need to sort of do anything; you just need to log in with your credentials, um, and that's the same for Mailchimp and for Dot Digital. Um, now, those we've also got an API as well, which you can pass data and retrieve data directly from the sort of mapping platform. Uh, along with it being able to upload um, your own spreadsheets, you know, either, you know, CSV files or, or Excel files. Um, but the thing with the connectors inbound for the, the three CRM systems is very much it's pulling all of the data in real time and uh, doing what is called, you know, location or geocoding on the fly. The idea of the marketing connectors with MailChimp and uh, dot digital is is being able to select and filter the data on the map and then pass it back to those systems so if you wanted to create a marketing list in mailchimp you could draw around a region on the map or you could select certain postcodes yeah. and it would build that it would build that list for you um, one of the things we do we are working on right now is building more connectors um, we wanted to do the first sort of five or six to start with uh, for, for the launch in january but we've We've listed out five more for this year, including workbooks and uh, lead analytics and those uh, those kind of things. Um, but we our objective by the end of next year is probably to have sort of about fifty different endpoints that you can connect to. Okay. Does that does that answer that? Or yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've got any more any more questions on that, but I think I think that's definitely a comprehensive answer. Um, I think well, I've tried actually, I suppose like most people at the moment, not to keep talking about COVID as much because I feel like everyone's lives have been dominated over the last uh, few months with it. Um, we, we spoke there about the fact that, you know, actually a lot of this tool and, you know, location planning is really useful for things like lockdown areas, for example, where maybe yeah. people won't actually, you know, be be utilizing local businesses and so on, so that could actually be really relevant for people. Um, but from your perspective, would you, would you say, you know, CRM systems are now more important than ever in this kind of post, well, hopefully post-COVID world? And, and you know, your thoughts around that? So yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I've spent a lot of my career um, implementing CRM systems. Um, and I'm an advocate of implementing them well. Mm. Um, and there is still this kind of mindset that says, oh, if I subscribe to a CRM system, then I get CRM. Um, and a lot of it is about the process and about the data. And if you've got a really good system that's really well implemented that you can follow that process, then right now, you know, sales, you know, the underlying element of any business is making money and, and selling. So mm. a CRM system that's that can be used properly is is super valuable right now. Um, and using that data in ways, you know, it be mapping or analytics is is also hugely valuable. Those businesses that don't have you know, really good data sets, um, the old adage is, you know, rubbish data, you know, rubbish data in, rubbish data out. Um, that that's very much going to be still the case. But having a, a really good CRM, absolutely. Um, and CRM is changing also. I mean, you know, I don't know. You're a lot younger than I am, so. <laughs> Um, I, you know, the first CRM systems were very, very basic, you know, they were databases with, you know, customer capture and a bit of sales and lead. Now they're, they're so more advanced, you know, even, even the, the simplest ones, you know, you can get some really good kind of process and workflow. So yeah, absolutely. It's, it's super important right now. Yeah, well, I think, uh, I mean, I've seen changes in, in the different technologies and systems that are used even like, over the last few years, um, yeah. just 
routed across the space. So, yeah, I can definitely see what you mean. I think that's what's actually interesting about the area that you know you and I both sit, and obviously in different in different spaces within that. But that actually. The, the key thing is that so many businesses do really need to understand what people are doing and how they're interacting and reacting to this time and, yeah. and what, what to do next and how to you know better get it better get, get a better understanding sort of their customers yeah and especially for those businesses where everybody's now working from home because that that genie's pretty much been let out of the bottle hasn't it you know and yeah. how, how many people want to go back to their three-hour commute um to go yeah. to the london office or to the city office um probably a lot less than there was before yeah um, you know, you're going to be able to get a train seat for the next the next 12 months let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely felt that way i mean you can well you obviously can see i'm actually back in our office at the moment but um yeah i, I think uh, yeah it's changing all the time the people who are based in london it's obviously tricky if you've got to get trains and tubes all the time so it's definitely yeah. a new world for lots of lots of businesses and um, with their customers, and I, um, think, I think that's why cloud-based systems like CRM or, you know, um, well, any any of the cloud-based systems, you know, they add value because people can now access all of that data from whatever location they're they're working from. I think we've got yeah. another question coming up, haven't we? Yeah, I've just seen there's one that's coming from Arif. Um, so he's asked, what's unique in respect to location in comparison to other platforms? I can see that you handle locations in table fields and visualize accordingly. Um, am I missing anything? Now, one of the one of the approaches that uh, we've taken with Maximize is about having lots of data uh, endpoints. So, our, our view of the world is very much we're going to have lots and lots of data connections that allow the analytics on the map to be real time. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of analytic systems, and this is no fault of the analytic systems. And if you talk to, you know, the development directors and development managers of those systems, they'll you know, be open and honest and say the charting and the analytics was first and then they took the data and stuck it on a map. As we put it on a map and as you move around the map, all of the analytics change as you're moving by location. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea for us was then you could layer that data on top um, and switch it on and switch it off so you get a regional view. Um. Yeah, well, I think I'm just I'm just reading through. We've got a few lots of different questions coming through. Hopefully, we'll get to. But um, please do keep them coming. I can see lots popping up as I'm going along. And um, one of the other phrases that we talk about a lot, or I keep hearing from different people, is around you know the new normal. Um, I feel like that's like oh, yeah. the go-to phrase at the minute. And um, with, with I suppose people have got you know concerns about you know the impact of the new normal on you know central business districts and how that's. You know, how things will play out for people. What impact do you think it will have on the significance of, of location analytics? I oh, asked. Yes. That's kind of a, a really good question because people are getting used to the sort of the outcome of what's actually happened. Um, and I've I've unluckily been through you know two of these before. Not obviously with a you know a, a pandemic, but you know the two thousand two crash where you know. It was the end of the dot-com boom, if anybody remembers that. Um, and businesses had to get used to a whole set of uh, uh, a whole set of new normal. And same, you know, in 2008, when we went through the financial crash, you know, a, a lot changed then as well. Um, and I think what's going to happen, um, because um, the location intelligence, GIS type, you know, call it, call it what you will, um, is set for a rapid growth in from a, what was fairly niche to what's probably going to be 10 times bigger over the next five, 10 years. Um, I think businesses are going to sort of use those systems to uh, analyze data, not only just by region, but to get more insight about their business decisions. Um, I think, you know, it's, you know, it, Location intelligence is deemed to grow, but it's not. Some people talk about core GIS is, you know, is graphical information systems going to change? And I, I don't think they will. I think what will happen is there'll be a lot more kind of features that come from around the core GIS. Um, we talk a, a lot of, a lot, talk a lot about location intelligence. We talk about a lot about location of things, which is the follow on from the internet of things. Because yeah. you think of all modern modern cars are now connected to the internet in some way for, for, for tracking. And that data is gonna come available. You know? And you can actually subscribe to you know, major manufacturers to track kind of vehicle data, um, not actually, 
get everybody's vehicle, but you can understand yeah. where road mass is, where sort of, you know, population density is, all of those kind of things. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's going to play a really, really big part. Yes, yeah, I'm just thinking, I've just recently started driving again, so I'm thinking about them tracking me, getting lost every two minutes. Every <laughs> day. I haven't driven in a long time, and it's been a, it's been an interesting journey getting used to it again. Yeah. Um, we've had a, a actually quite a good question from Dean, and I think this is, uh, for anyone that's like listening in, um, you know, hearing someone like yourself that's obviously got experience um, working across the data space and, you know, and, you know, setting up your own business and also um, in other businesses, um, learning and understanding from you, any recommendations that you've got um, around technologies that would be good to, to help people develop. And Dean's asked uh, on this, do you have any recommendations for good open source learning locations or learning sources um, for social statistics um, on, you know, wealth, health, um, et cetera? Yeah, there's some absolutely great free resources uh, available online, and and I've been, you know, connecting with them, you know, over the last twelve eighteen months. You know, there's a great uh, blog site called Geo Awesomeness, um, and there's loads and loads of free material, loads of learning, loads of uh, sort of data. Um, more and more data is made available by country as well, so you can learn from the data. The UK is going through this. Um, or UK government has set up this uh, data commission called the Geospatial Commission um, um, with the drive to get more and more data available. You can now get all of the crime data, you can get all of the you know, uh, fire data and health data and those kind of things. They're not always in the best formats, but I believe that's going to improve. Um, America is very good at publishing uh, a lot of data. So there's there's no uh, limitation of data out there to actually kind of play with and have a look at. Um, and there's also lots of, I mean, we have a, a free account with Mapsimize. You don't have to pay us any money. You can go sign up, get your free account, start chucking some data at it to have, mm -hmm. to have a play and, and learn. And we've got a lot of students using our our tooling as well, just to to kind of you know do research and, and, and do bits of data. And obviously we, we add in a lot of the Google features. So you've got Street View and, and, and those kind of things, which a lot of free GIS or free mapping tools don't have. Um, yeah, look for the blogs really. Um, the, the web is full of them. There's there's also uh, some great community forums that uh, that pr pr um, provide a lot of KML files. Now, getting technical, a KML file is a, a markup file that defines data for a map um, and you can upload those. And, and when I talked before about tube stations and those kind of things, it it's usually that kind of data. It's analytical data that, that can be loaded onto a map, you know, by population or by school or all those kind of things. So there's there's huge resources. Um, search for geo, um, geo geospatial, uh, geo, geospatial commission, those kind of things. There's lots and lots of data available and lots and lots of kind of information where you can learn um, all about, you know, what's going to happen in the geospatial space. Yeah, I think, um, I th yeah, I mean, I would echo everything you've said, certainly from my point of view as well. I don't keep talking about when I first started recruiting and et cetera, but I think the space is changing so much all the time. And I think people are, what I notice myself is that people are very keen and like passionate to knowledge share and you know, probably not about what their businesses are doing, but, you know, to share new techniques or technologies. I know people are, you know, there's loads of online courses that you can access as well if you're looking to upskill in like particular technologies that are often free that you can you can sign up to. I yeah. think um, obviously in in more normal times, um, you'd be able to go along to meetups and things. Um, you know, Dean, I don't know how, how how interactive you are on those things, but there's a lot of communities, um, not just in London, you know, all over the UK now popping yeah. up and hundreds of, of people who meet up and have like coding competitions or or just knowledge there around around these different areas that you've you've touched on. So I'd encourage you to look online. I certainly see you know huge amounts of people blogging and. You know, blogging about different things that they've tried out and you know i think i think that's what's really great about this space is you know generally people are very passionate about it and, and want mm -hmm. to share and talk about what they're doing yeah it's what was the, the way i would relate it actually is that you know when i started my career which is you know, 20 odd years ago <laughs> um, the software development space was very much the same everybody was trying new stuff you know the, the internet didn't exist that's mm -hmm. how old i am you know, the, the, you, you're building websites was, you know, just not a thing. You know, we had dial up um, if we were lucky. Um, and, and the software industry was very much 
really cutting edge you know we were we were going we were transitioning from that time of, of desktop applications to, to kind of web thin client type and the amount of learning and the amount of resources that were available to us a lot of it was actually sent around on cd and, and on paper because the web wasn't what it is now but the geo space feels very like that right now uh, well not just geo but analytics as well mm -hmm. um, it seems to be an area that's going to rapidly grow over the next decade i would think yeah i uh, i feel you feel like you, you do one thing and then it's already out of date something else has come up and there's something else that you can access and do yeah. um i, I follow on i guess from from dean's point uh, you know people ask me this quite a lot and again i think this is a great opportunity for anyone that's you know listening in and please keep up your questions coming i can see different ones popping up and um, but keep them coming through and um, i get asked a lot around advice um, about going into the analytics market. Obviously, I personally specialize in recruiting across customer analytics and insight, but I know on your side, you also cover um, the data visualization and, and the data piece. What, what advice would you give to someone who was looking to get into this now? Um, I suppose from two points, if you are a graduate who's looking to get into the space, um, but maybe also if you're someone that's looking to transition, um, what, what advice would you have? Um, love data, definitely. <laughs> um, no, definitely have a passion uh, for understanding data and analytics and, and be ma quite mathematical. It, it does always help. Um, a lot of these tools are becoming a lot easier to use. So I think what we'll find is that in every job, they become a, a feature. Um, yeah. We'll all, you know, it was a bit, it's a bit like, you know, can you use a word, you know, going back some time, can you use a word processor? Can you, can you, do you know how to use Windows or not on Office? Yeah. As, now, <laughs> as now it's a, a given and, you know, everybody knows how to do that. And I think anybody that's coming into the, the, the digital space, well, you know, because let's, let's put a big umbrella over the top of it and, and analytics is, you know, just do your research, have, have passion for it and, and, and love the data that you're working with. Um, and want to get those results because there are there's so many opportunities to to kind of do better uh, analysis through data um, and businesses are going to want more and more um, to be more and more competitive they're going to want to use that data so there's going to be demand for people who understand and who can report off data and build analytics yeah do you think that um i was asked this question the other day actually um around you know educational background if, if people if, if someone hasn't got a you know i suppose a, a stem subject um, yeah. and their degree is that is that tricky you know would it be harder for them to get into the space and it's, it's funny because i've actually um, worked with people and, and help people get roles that haven't had that background mm -hmm. and that have been that have been able to move into it and I, I don't think it's a huge deal breaker. I just I agree with you. I think you just have to be quite passionate about the space and, and actually try and upskill in your spare time and try and build on your experience and demonstrate that when you're you're going in and interviewing with people. Yeah, I think if you'd uh, if you'd asked me that sort of five years ago, um, and we were talking about you know geospatial and 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 data analytics through geospatial and location intelligence, I would have probably said yes. You need a you know a degree in geography. Um, you need to know how to put a map together, um, but all of these problems have been solved. You know, these are these are these are mature problems now. That you know, Google has done an amazing job. Well, other providers as well. You know, have done an amazing job with you know providing, you know, mapping tools. Um, you know, Google has just provided all of this satellite data. They don't know what they're going to do with it yet, but you've basically got sixty years worth of satellite data that you can that you can play with. So you can actually map an area and watch it change over 60 yeah. years um and so i think it's going to be a lot easier for people to join in um because the tooling is a is a lot easier to use um, yeah. and the applications are easier to use so it's then down to the kind of you know can i understand what's going on and and we've given our product to people uh to, to, to customers and they've got no experience whatsoever um but they kind of know what they want that you know they want to see data in a certain area and and they they usually get it within a couple of days of using it um, we'll field questions for the first couple of weeks and then they're usually flying on their own and I, I think that's the same for lots of other applications um, but there is one caveat I guess if you're using analytic tools and geo tools it's not to build things for the sake of it um, you know because like any any software project or any kind of 
technology project. There has to be a purpose <laughs> for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, I've seen people build, you know, uh, you know, Power BI dashboards and things, and you say, well, what's it for? And they go, well, it's because I could, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Actually, where's the value in what you're doing, and then then learn how to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But only um, there's, there's only one there's only one member of our team who's got a maths degree. Um, the the rest have come from software development. A lot of it is self learnt, um, and you know, obviously, software engineering changes so much so rapidly, um, and they've had, all had to learn how to uh, you know interact with the, the 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 Google services that we use and and some of the other kind of geo services that we use as well. Yeah, well, I, I think that's great. You know, I think that's really refreshing to hear that actually that people have come from such different backgrounds. And that yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely possible to get into that. I agree with a lot of what you're saying. I would have thought, you know, four or five years ago, I'd have been like, you probably really need this this specific background. Um, yeah. But you know, it has changed so much. And I also think I was talking about this on um, when we on a live I did on Tuesday for our diversity, you know, launching the backgrounds of people coming from the. Um, I think data is just spoken about so much more. You know, at schools and and you know, uh, CRMs and everything like that is just much more widely known about as well. Yeah. People yeah. have exposure to it, and that's why they're maybe more adaptable to working, um, and don't necessarily have to come from these traditional backgrounds. That yeah, and I, and and the strange thing is, you know, CRM has been with us now for about you know, 18, 20 years, um, and still businesses. I think it's only about 10, 15 percent of businesses implement them properly. Um, the rest will have a bit of a go at it. Um, yeah. A lot of businesses, you know, I've I've worked with businesses that are turning over three, four million pounds a year. And they're still running the whole operation on Excel, um, and they might have a CRM system, but they just dump data in it. They don't. They don't use it. It's, everything is flying around on Excel spreadsheets, um, and it, it, you know that whole kind of understanding, especially as these systems are made cheaper. You know, I mean, the the first CRM system I worked with was that I think the server license was a hundred thousand pounds. You know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was a big, big investment for kind of enterprises. Now, you know, CRM. You can get a CRM system for you know ten, fifteen, twenty dollars per user and build up from there. You know some of them are even free if you you know I'm not going to start naming names, but yeah. you, you can get you can get free product and free accounts to to actually run run your CRM on. And I think more and more businesses and, and more people coming into business, especially the younger generation, expect these things to be there. Um, and yeah, because they expect them to be there, they they start to become to be there and then for everybody gets used to using them um, yeah. and therefore using the data. Yeah. Yeah, it's all, it's all very different now. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it's gonna, it'll keep changing. I mean, if if you look at the things like LinkedIn, um, uh, you know, how marketing has changed and how we're all, you know, connecting and working and sharing in a completely different way, not, not just in this space, but in, in lots of other ways as well. Um, and I think the business world is changing. Um, we're, we're adapting to whatever this new normal is. Yeah, I know. it'd be interesting to see. It's, a, it's definitely um, it's a very well used phrase. I keep using it all the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, I, you know, we've got uh, a little bit more time left. So if anyone okay. does have more questions, um, please please do share them now um, before we wrap up. But I suppose from my side, my final question would be, where do you see the data and analytics space in, in five years' time? I know that's a huge question to ask, um, but are there any key things that you, you think might happen? Or Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really interesting question. It's a good question as well, because I've been doing some research on exactly that, because obviously we've invested quite a lot of money to build a, 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 a software platform that does this stuff. Um, so we want to know where it's going. You know, is this is this a, a legacy dying off, or is this a, a growing a growing trend? And it's very much going to be a growing trend. I mean, there was a brilliant research paper written um, that's available online that says the kind of analytics and location intelligence space is going to grow from, you know, in in 2018, the whole software space for for analytics and, and location intelligence was worth around 20 billion dollars worldwide, um, and it's pitched over the next sort of decade to be worth 180 billion worldwide um which is a you know a, a 10 times growth but it's growing every year and more and more people are sort of saying well actually how can i use this data better 
And if you think back to, I think it was 2005 that the, the phrase big data was first coined. I don't know if you, you know, if you, if you sort of remember that, but yeah. you know, I, the idea was that, you know, it's like, we're going to put all of this data into a big data warehouse and we're going to be able to do all sorts of things with it, which is very true. If you're a Facebook or an Amazon, you know, if you're one of these big organizations that can have these data warehouses, um, that's great. But a lot of, you know, a lot of countries, developed countries around the world, their economies are based on very you know, small to medium, half of their economies are based on small to medium type businesses like ours or like yours or like any any sort of uh, you know, business that employs 100 you know, or less than 100 people. Um, uh, and those kind of businesses can't afford huge investment on data analytics. They can't afford you know, data warehouses. So having an approach with, you know, cloud software like we've taken with lots of data connectors allows you to just pull that data from lots of different sources. And I think that's going to be a big key driver. Uh, and a lot of businesses or our software providers are going to start connecting up systems. Um, you know, I remember you know, a few years ago when integration was all the big thing and uh, every every recruiter was looking for, for integration consultants who could join systems together because none of the systems had APIs, but now it's commonplace and, and everything's obviously in, 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 the, in the cloud, which I, I still hate that phrase, but, you know, it's in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it. It's another one of those annoying catchphrases. Well, um, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really, really Yeah, no problem. Um, hearing everything about Maximize um, and about the business and what you're doing. And I definitely think... There's, there's going to be, I'm sure, lots that you'll be able to do over the coming months with all the different changes and this new normal that we're yeah. in. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today um, for this week's dialogue um, and for getting involved. Um, and if you have any further questions um, for myself or Alistair, feel, feel free to drop us both a message um, on LinkedIn or, and we can, we can come back to you that way. Yeah, thank you. Do do, do connect with me. Um, and thank you, uh, thank you for uh, arranging this. It's been great. Great. Thanks, everyone.